You came back. <laughs> All right. I tell you, like Jason said, and it's so true, the Sunday night crowd is the crowd. Is that right? Those are the ones that are dedicated. I like to add Wednesday night in there too, because coming out Wednesday is pretty dedicated as well. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed the message this morning about the flesh, the two natures, and then c- covering the flesh. So tonight we're going to cover the spirit. The spirit. As we talked about this morning, that there's a great battle going on. How many people feel the battle? Is the battle real? Yeah. I don't know about you, but it's real. You know, the Bible tells us that we need to know that we're going through the battle. Think about your brother and sisters that's going through the battle. That's why forgiveness is so important. I don't know about you, but everybody's not perfect all the time. Everybody's not walking in the Spirit all the time. So the Lord lets us know that we need to forgive and then work on walking in the Spirit. So tonight we're going to talk about the Spirit side of the nature. Um, We're going to pick it up in Galatians chapter 5. There's only two verses, 22 to 23. That shows you how good the Spirit is. It's shorter than the flesh. So if you would stand with me, Galatians chapter 5, we're going to look at verses 22 to 23. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. Are you there? All right. It reads this way, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Let's pray. Father God, it's once again that we come in the mighty, precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word tonight. We ask right now that you prepare our hearts to receive your word. And Lord God, our prayer always is that we not just be hearers only of your word, but help us to be doers as well. I pray that I decrease and you increase. And Lord, we'll give your name all the honor and praise in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. So if you compare this verse to the flesh verse, the flesh verse is much longer. Did you see that? The spirit is so short that it tells us a lot of things that's going on. I told my son as he is, all my boys, as they're looking for their, their mate, that they need to look at these scriptures. Look at the flesh as opposed to the spirit. And see if that person is betraying the flesh or the spirit. It'll tell you a lot, won't it? It'll tell you a lot. You need to inspect what's going on. I like to break these down real quick here. We'll run quickly. But it, the, it talks about love. The first thing it, the spirit talks about is love. What type of love is this? This is what they call agape love. It is that design, that that divine concern for others. Irregardless of how they treat you, you're going to love them regardless. It's the type of love that Romans chapter 5, 8 says, But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. This is the love that we're talking about. So see if somebody is displaying this type of love. Or are they only lovely when you're doing something for them? Hmm. That'll, that'll open some eyes. Or are they still going to love you when you're acting like a knucklehead? That's the type of love the Spirit is talking about here. The next thing, joy. I love this. Joy is that inward peace and sufficiency. You know, a lot of people say happiness. I I really, you know, like happy holidays and all this stuff. I, I try to remove certain words from my vocabulary. And happiness is based on what? Happenings. What's going on. So you are happy as long as everything going your way. But joy 
is on the inside. It doesn't matter what's happening. You can still have joy. Do you see the difference? So when the Bible says the Spirit, it's joy. Do they have joy? Not when everything's falling apart. They're not happy. But they still have joy in the Lord. Are they showing that joy? Do you see the difference there? That joy, that inward peace and sufficiency. Because you're not resting on the things that are going around you, but you're resting on what's in you. And that's the Spirit of God. So that's what he's talking about here. The next thing is peace. It is that confidence and quietness of the soul. Boy, isn't it good to have peace. You ever work in chaos? I went to visit my family a few weeks ago. You know the chaos I told you there. But I tell you, I was able to, in the midst of that chaos, have peace. Because I knew it, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I was able to say, Lord God, I'm going up there. I knew it was a mission trip. I've always been taking care of my mom, but there were some things that, was, that needed to be put in place. And the Lord allowed me to be a part of it. I tell you, I felt so good. My family won't talk. And then my mom said, when I came, everybody want to come over to the house and talk now. She said, you put up a front while you're here. I'm like, look, if we can get them to talk, whatever it takes. But you need to be able to have peace in the midst of a storm. Are you around somebody that's always have chaos? Think about that. They're not really showing the fruits of the Spirit. They always have chaos. That's part of the flesh. God wants us to have peace, and that's confidence in Him. Are you able to have peace when the whole world is falling apart? That'll let you know where you're at. I don't know you, about a few years ago, my whole world was coming down when I was deemed with um, kidney cancer. And I tell you, it was tumbling down. But the Lord gave me the peace. Now, it wasn't at first. I freaked out at first. I tell you, I was going crazy. The doctor thought he was going to hit this, like, sedate this poor fellow. <laughs> but then the Lord gave me peace. And I tell you, I was able to go through what I had to go through. And as they say, look at me now. But I can, can't really say look at me. I can say what? Look at him. He's awesome. Whenever we simply trust him and allow the spirit of God to work in us, we can have that peace. The next thing the spirit says is this long suffering. This is patient and that endurance without quitting. Are you long suffering? Or you say, hey, I'm done with it. I ain't got time to fool with it. But if you're in the spirit, you're going to work with some people. We know sometimes some people are a little rough around the edges, but you'll work with them. You'll be long suffering. You'll be patient. They're not where you're at, but you can see where God can get them to. And you can have that patience. And that endurance without quitting. And whenever you're going through things, the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for thee. Or are you going to have that long suffering to endure what you got to go through? Because if you, if you do, that means you're working in the spirit. The next one is gentleness. Are you kind? These are things that we can check to see if we're in the spirit. Are you kind? Or are you... Brr, somebody come to you and you're always jumping at them. No. That'll let us know if we're just a mean person. You ever just seen somebody just always mean? Whenever you go to them, they don't have a kind word to say about anybody. The next one, goodness. Goodness is love in action. Are you showing love? To your brothers? Or are you showing love to the world? Remember, if we're the light of the world, God wants us to show love. So this is what he's saying. Um, being goodness. The next thing here is faith, dependability. Are you dependable? Are you faithful in what God has assigned you to do? If you're faithful, God will use you. God is not looking at your abilities. He's looking at your faith. 
God will take those that has the least abilities and use them because he knows they're going to be faithful. Man, that true. I can tell you it's true because I've seen the Lord do it many a times, even with me. And here's the next one. We're almost done. Meekness. Meekness. Remember, Jesus Christ was meek. Meekness is that subdued strength. You have the power to do something, but you in control of your of, of of the situation. Like Jesus Christ, when he was on a cross, he had the power to come down. But he was meek and he stayed on a cross for us. That's what meekness is. Meekness is that subdued strength. Many a time we can really just destroy somebody and hurt them, but God wants us to be meek and look at the bigger picture. That's a tough thing right there. Because if you're going to be meek, you're going to have to forgive. If you're going to be meek, you're going to have to be last. And this is what the Spirit is talking about. And the last one is temperance. This is self-control. Do you have self-control? Or you just say whatever you want to say. You have no constraints of your body, of your mouth, of what you're doing. Temperance. As we went down this list... We simply need to look at ourselves in the mirror to see where we measure up. Do we have these qualities of the Spirit? Because it will tell us where we're at. Now as we talked about earlier today, that there's a battle going on. The flesh was first. It's just like we mentioned earlier this morning, that normally if you first and somebody comes in your place and want to take over, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be, it's going to be ugly. Because the flesh says, hey, I was here first, but now the Spirit is coming to take residence, and both of them wants to be in control. And as we read in Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, it says this. It says, for the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Wow. So we have a major battle going in. And I tell you, in our Christian life, I know when you read the Bible many a times, you hear about Israel backsliding. And you're like, man, do those people ever get it right? They're always backsliding. But then when you look at your life, you'll find out you're just like Israel. You've been backsliding. You've been up. You've been down. You've been cold. You've been hot. But God wants us to be in the Spirit at all times. Now, I told you there's five ways that will help you stay in the Spirit. We talked about five ways to get that old flesh under control. But there's five ways... That we can walk in the Spirit at all times. And here they go. We are to declare ourselves alive to the Spirit. Remember, we declared ourselves dead unto the flesh, but we pose to declare ourselves alive to the Spirit. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 11. This was um, one of the scriptures this day, this morning. Galatians chapter 6, verse 11. It says, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but look, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we're dead in the flesh, but we're alive in the Spirit. It says, I die, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Is Christ living in you? You have to declare life to the Spirit. And that Spirit that lives in you is greater than He that's in the world. So isn't that good? We need to declare that the Spirit is alive. Many a times if we don't know we have something, we won't use it. It's just like we have a lot of electronic devices at the house. Like we got, we bought this nice washer and dryer, 
And I tell you, my wife will not read that manual to save her life. I say, Toya, read the manual. They designed it. They tell you how to use it. Well, I just see the button. I just push the buttons. Goodness gracious. Well, that's just how it is with the Spirit. God has given us so much, and we don't use it. Satan tells you that you're dead, you're wretched, but God tells you you're alive. Who are you going to believe? I'm telling you tonight that God says declare yourself alive. Look at Galatians chapter 5 verse 25. Galatians chapter 5 25 it says this. If we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit. Well he didn't tell you to sin in the spirit did he? What did he tell you to do? Walk. Why did he say walk? Why do you think he said walk? It's an action. Why did he tell you to love? It's an action. We need to walk in the Spirit. Walk in what God has given us. Satan will tell us that we don't have something and we won't use it. I told you before, Satan's biggest ploy is to get you thinking that you're something other than what God said you are. Like he told Eve all this, these lies, and she believed it. She had everything. God wasn't holding back, but Satan told her that he was holding back. Who are you going to believe? God, Satan says you're dead. God says you're alive. And then once you know that you're alive, you can walk in the Spirit. Now, as we talked about earlier... The flesh, the Bible told us to put off the flesh, but he tells us to put on the Spirit. That's the second point. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. Listen to this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So as we put off the old man, we have to put on the new man. It is a a decision that we have to make that says, hey, we are going to walk in the spirit and in that newness of life. So we have to take that action and put the spirit on. Now, how do we put the spirit on? There are some ways we can put the spirit on. What are they? You know them. Reading God's Word, praying, praying, fellowshipping, witnessing, witnessing. yes, Mm -hmm. you know that's my favorite, witnessing, but any way we can bring honor and glory to the Lord, we can walk in the Spirit, because when we walk in the Spirit, the Bible tells us that He will lead us where he wants us to go. You know, everybody knows Psalms 23 verse 3. He says, He restoreth my soul. Get this. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So as we're walking in the Spirit, he's going to lead and guide us. I don't know about you, but Satan has some landmines set up and trying to get you. Do you think you need the Lord leading you? Because you're going to be faced with some decisions. And you're going to have to run everything through God's word and say, am I going to do it the flesh or am I going to do it the spirit? Am I going to please man or am I going to please God? And as you navigate through life, he will direct your path. I can't tell you how many things I have avoided by simply listening to the Lord. And it was so clear. Somebody say, well, when it's so clear, you need to do it. So everybody say, hey, I'm not sure what the Lord wants me to do. Well, one thing you are sure, you know what he don't want you to do. So if you know for sure what he doesn't want you to do, the, the, the reverse is that's what he wants you to do. Does that make sense? I mean, we know what not to do. It's just like I was talking to somebody out on the witnessing field, and they said they didn't want to use the Bible. And little did those little people know <laughs> is that God had put something in them called the conscience. 
And I tell you, it lines up with the Ten Commandments so good. They don't believe the Bible. I mean, they say, oh, I don't believe the Bible. I say, do you believe stealing is wrong? Yeah, stealing is wrong. It's in the Bible. <laughs> but they don't want to use the Bible. Is killing wrong? Yeah, killing wrong. It's in the Bible. You see, this is what I'm saying. They are so confused, but we can take God's Word and lead them. We are supposed to be those light in a dark world. Like I said, we had an opportunity to go out yesterday, and we seen five people give their hearts to Christ. And I'm telling you, if you ever seen someone in the dark and the lights turned on, wow. It was this lady named Shawana. I don't know which one of the ladies are going to call her, but I'll actually be calling her myself tomorrow as well. But she was just going through so much, and she said, I needed this. She said, I was just trying to be a good person to get to heaven. And then I told her all her righteousness are filthy rags. She looked, what do you mean? I like, you can't save yourself. I said, if you could save yourself, that would be no purpose for Christ to come. And then we broke down the scriptures. Something that I have been having them to do is read the scriptures themselves. And you could just see the Holy Spirit touch her. And as the tears began to flow... The Spirit touched her heart, and she was saved. This is what I'm talking about when you're walking in the Spirit. Now, the next thing here is we are commanded to feed the Spirit. Oh God, this is my favorite. This morning, we were talked about the flesh. We were told to what? Starve that guy, right? We were told not to feed him. But the Spirit tonight, 1 Peter 2.2, 2, check this one out. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. It says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. And that next scripture goes on to say, you need to read that next scripture. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If you claim to be a Christian, and the Holy Spirit is in you, the Spirit of God, you will have a desire for righteousness. You will have a desire for His Word. And the Bible says as we desire His Word, we grow. So God says we need to feed the Spirit every day. I always ask the question, do you eat every day? Y'all would say three times a day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you eat every day? Yes. So the question is, whoever you feed the most is going to control you. God told us to starve the flesh. It's pretty simple. And He told us to feed the Spirit that we may grow thereby. I don't think we, a rocket scientist has to figure this out for us. It's pretty simple. We starve the flesh with its worldly desires. And we feed the Spirit with the righteousness of God. And that's His Word. Because it says, Thy Word has I hid in my heart. What? That I might not sin against Thee. Wow. And the last thing that we can do to walk in the Spirit is we need to depend upon the Spirit. We need to depend upon the Spirit at all times. I already quoted this scripture, but I like to give it to you. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that's in the world. We need to depend upon Jesus. That spirit that lives with inside of us. Do you know what you have inside of you? Now, in the Old Testament, the spirit came upon the saints. And then what did it do? It departed. How much more do we have now where the spirit resides within us? We are the temple of God. So as we're going around throughout our life... Knowing that the Spirit of God is living in us, how should we live our lives? How should we live our lives? We should live a holy life. 
Knowing that God resides in us and He sees all things. And it tells us, greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. Who's in the world? The devil. He's trying to get you to be unfruitful for Christ. He knows He can't steal your salvation. But what He can do is make you an ineffective Christian for Christ. That little light that you're supposed to be shining, He'll have you with shades on so you can't shine. He'll have you doing things that you know you shouldn't do because you're living in the flesh and not in the Spirit. Do you see this great battle that's going on? As we looked at the differences between the flesh and the Spirit, they're totally reversed. Like I say, they're light and darkness. God wants us to walk in the Spirit. And whenever we walk in the Spirit, Satan will not be happy. Whenever you're trying to do things right for Christ, anybody could attest to you that's trying to do things for Christ, that whenever you try to do something for Christ, trouble comes. Is that right? Yeah. It's not going to be an easy road. Matter of fact, if it's an easy road, you better watch out. You're probably not doing the right thing. Think about it. If you're going to be doing something right for Christ, there's going to be difficulties. If there's not difficulties, you better rethink what you're doing. Because Satan will attack anything that's righteous for God. Satan is a liar and the father of it. So we have to be on alert. How do you fight a lie? With what? Who is truth? Jesus is truth. When he said Satan was the father of a lie, and Jesus Christ is the truth, we need to make sure that we are in God's word because it is the truth. It's just like Nicodemus, as I said earlier today. He was coming looking for the truth. And he found out what the truth was. He came to Jesus and asked him the question. And Jesus gave him the answer. Jesus himself said this. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. See, Nicodemus was following the Jewish law. He was a rich person, thought he was doing everything right. But as I told the, the girl the other day, is that all your righteousness or is filthy rag. We only get to heaven by one thing, and that's recognizing that we are a sinner. And two, believing that Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sin on the cross. And then most importantly, the third day, he rose from the grave. The Bible says once you believe that and ask him to come into your heart, you will be saved. You have to ask yourself the question, have I done that? Well, I'll tell you how you can know. If you look at the flesh and you look at the spirit and find out where you fall at, if you don't have any of these attributes of the spirit, you're not saved. Now, if you say, hey, I have these attributes, attributes, but they're not being used, that means you're backsliding. So that means you have a choice to make. If you find yourself wanting on the flesh side, you need to ask God to forgive your sins and believe in His Son and take the gift that He's given you and you'll be saved. Now, if you've done that and you're 100% sure, you need to ask the Lord to forgive you that you can walk in that newness of life and that you can live that holy life. And one point that will help you walk in the Spirit is that you do what God tells you to do. Many a times, when we're not doing what God has us to do, we're in our comfort zones. Satan don't even have to bother us. I hear a lot of Christians say, well, Satan really don't bother me much. Well, what does that mean? Well, did, did, did Satan um, bother the apostles and the disciples? Why? And Jesus, thank you. Why, why do you think he bothered them? He wanted to break them down. He wanted to break them down. Because they were doing the Father's business. What business are you doing? I'm telling you, if you're not working for Christ, let me tell you here, everybody say, hey, 
The world is getting bad. I always say, what are you doing? The scripture told you they're going to get bad. Don't you believe it? That's what I want to say to them. They say, hey, the world is getting bad. The Bible says, in the end, that perilous time shall come. They're not going to be peaceful times. We have to believe God's word. So then, the Bible says, we hasten the return of Christ. Why? Because we're not winning souls. If you're ready to get out of here, if you're ready for Christ to return, He's not going to come up until the Father tells Him that church is built. The church is only built by souls, don't you know? So as you lead someone to Christ, guess what you're doing? You're hastening, you're, you're saying, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. But when we're not telling people about Christ, we're hastening the return of Christ. Are you the reason that we're delayed? Or that we can get out of here tonight? Just think about it. If you take that prayer card out there. How many people seen the prayer card? How many? Did you read it? Did you check the back out? Is that pretty good? I'm telling you. Matter of fact, we used that yesterday. I was, it was so funny. I was trying to flip through the Bible and have the person read. The guy said, hey, Antoine is on the back of the card. Flip the card over. So I flipped the card over and had the person read it. What a difference. That's what I'm going to start doing now. Because it's a much difference when I'm reading it to them. But when they can read it, and that Holy Spirit works on their heart, what a difference. And this is all goes back to the flesh and the Spirit. I just, I'm just going to close here with this. Is that remember, there's a battle going on. And it's tough. Paul told you he, he would do some things, but the flesh was against him. And the spirit, it was a major battle. Some days he wins, some days he loses. And I want you to take that same struggle that you're going through. And think about your brother and sister. Sometimes we're so hard on our brother and sister, they're fighting a battle just like you. Just because you're winning, don't mean that they're winning. Pray for them. Forgive them. And then you'll find out. That this battle can be won simply by walking in the Spirit of God. Let's pray. Father God, we come tonight just thanking you for this privilege to hear your word tonight. Lord God, you told us that this is a great battle that's raging inside of us. But thanks be unto God that the victory can be won. You tell us that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Lord God, I pray that everyone examine themselves to see if they're in the body of Christ or are they still in the flesh and have not received the Spirit. I pray if that's the case, Lord God, I pray that they come, Lord God, and say, I'm sorry for my sins and I believe that Jesus died and on the third day rose from the graves. I accept him now by faith. And Lord, if it be that we are saved and we have been in a backslidden state, we pray that they come and say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Help me to walk in the Spirit day by day and let their light shine and be, live that holy life for you. So Lord God, we just thank you tonight. And I just thank you for this message. And we'll give your name all the honor and praise. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.